we won't be too long. Um, but I have a message I believe is important to me. Well, being a pastor, I never wanted to be a pastor. God had different, different plans for me. Believe you me, if you wouldn't have called me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be one. Being a pastor, you get a lot of enemies and when you try to do good to them. And I, I've learned a lot of times a friend is someone who will stick closer than a brother. An acquaintance will, will like you as long as you say everything they want you to say. But you say one thing they don't want you to, they don't want to hear, they, they, they rid of you. They rid of you. Well, I need friends. I believe I have friends here. Amen. My message is the title of Victory Over Our Enemy. And we all have enemies now, whether we, we like it or not. We've got Satan. If you're a born again believer, you've got an enemy. you got a bunch of demons that don't like you. But you know what? I don't like them either. they got bad breath. And when they get around me, I start smelling that breath. So I cast them into the dry place and according to the Lord of God. But I'm not fooled. There'll be some more waiting on me if I'm not calm. And look, don't, don't, don't think you're holy. Don't think you're so self righteous that. Satan they hadn't figured out about you. You'll plant things across your pathway that shouldn't be there, and your mind will start looking. Your mind will start looking at it, your mind will start acting on what something you ain't supposed to be looking at, and you ain't so supposed to be liking. Amen? Come on. That's why I want to surround myself with fellow believers. I don't want to surround myself with men who says tells off-color jokes. I don't want to be around people who who, who uses the God's name in vain. I don't want to be around people who makes fun of other people. I want to be around people who glorifies Jesus Christ. Because my strength comes from the Holy Spirit. I know that. But God says, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly together of believers because we draw strength from each other. Amen. We draw strength from each other this morning because of Brother Robert and, 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 and Brother Stephen. Yeah. We draw strength from each other. We need each other. We need to be in the presence of each other. We need to be with godly, righteous people. I want to be around people who praise for me, who praise and believe that God is going to hear and God is going to answer. Amen. We all need that. Yes. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Would you all please, if you want to, to turn there, 10 and 11. And it says this. <clears throat> We're talking about the forgiveness as well. We need to learn to forgive. We need to learn to forgive ourselves. We need to learn to forgive others. But I'll be honest with you, I can forgive someone, but I'm not getting in the pig pen with that someone. Amen. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse 10 says, <clears throat> and this is what Paul was talking about, but we want to go into victory. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive, forgave anything to whom I forgave it. For your sake forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now let me read. I done took it out. Okay. Okay. Let me read 1 Corinthians out of the New Living Translations. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 10 and 11. I'm going to bring it pretty close. Anyone you forgive, I also forgive. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake. Verse 11. In order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Satan wants to trap you. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 and 58 reads, well, just got to turn it right over. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let me share this with you. When you work for the Lord, whether it's in the church, outside the church, cutting somebody else's grass, cutting the 
church's grass, cleaning whatever, God will repay you. God don't want you to work for nothing. Because God is the one who gives blessings. I pastor a church because God called me to pastor a church. God don't want me working for nothing. He's going to bless me and my family. He's been doing it for over 40 years. God wants to do the same thing for you. So don't, don't get tired of serving the Lord. Don't get tired of working for the Lord. Don't get tired. Now, how many times have I heard in churches, well, we've been doing this for 30 years. We've got some young person to come in. Let them do it. No. Become a, become a teacher to that young person and show that young person what you are capable of doing. Don't get tired of working for the Lord. I don't know how many people would get, get tired of God's blessings upon them. I don't know how many people would. Most, amen, amen, and amen. But let's get back to what we're talking about. I think this is important. Victory carries the meaning of success in defeating the enemy. We have an enemy. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Success in overcoming difficulties. How many here has had difficulties? I know Inez has, and when she has, I have. We had a need back in, before Christmas. We had a very important need. Inez couldn't do anything, but we got a granddaughter that came and has been with us ever since to take care of Grandma. Amen. God has met our needs. Amen? Thank Praise you. God. He'll meet your needs too. You. Difficulties. The Word of God reveals to us that we have victory through Christ Jesus. We have victory. Can y'all say, I have victory? Amen. I'm not defeated. Say, I'm not defeated. I have Christ Jesus. The thought came to my mind, if and we do have victory, then how come many of us are not living the life of victory? Have we ever thought about that? Well, we're going to think about it a little bit. Hold on to that thought because we want to explore victory this morning. How many of you can use some victory in your life this morning? I know I can. I know I can. Our battle, first of all, though, and this is very important, brothers and sisters. If you're not my brother or you're not my sister, we can take care of that real quick. I'm talking about brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. We got it mixed up. Satan has got us mixed up. We think our battle is someone else. Our battle is the man across the, across the road, well, across there. Our battle is this and that. Our battle is not against flesh and blood according to the Word of God. For Ephesians 6 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I know what Satan is trying to do. I know what Satan is trying to do in this church. If we glorify Jesus Christ, we lift him up and we preach the truth according to the Word of God, he's not going to like it. And he's going to try to stop it. The best way to stop it is, is to take families and split them up. To take families out of the church. Whatever. He's trying to do that. He's trying to make a, get in between your families right now. You might not know it, but he's trying. But we, we understand what he's trying to do. And we have victory over it. But we need to understand we have victory. How do we have this victory? Not by fighting with our brothers and sisters or someone else, but rather by being on our face. You want to know how to hurt someone worse than you can and take a baseball bat to them. He goodness upon them. You want to put coals of fire on somebody's head? You don't get a pan and, and, and barbecue coals and light it and put it on their head. You put kindness on their head and that's worse than putting coals of fire on their head. Do you know that? Satan don't like it and we don't care whether he does or not. Because we have a battle and that battle is against Satan. It's not against flesh and blood. It's not against another denomination. It's not against them. It's against Satan and his demons. 
But what Satan and his demon wants to do is to get in the Christian family and cause dissension. Because first of all, they say, if you don't believe the way I say, I don't want to fool with you. Y'all with me on that? Keep this in mind. I am, I'm, I'm saved. I have no doubt about it. But i got to be honest with you. We've got to be honest with ourselves. If we keep kidding ourselves, we never will get any further than ourselves. We're going to stay in the same rut that we find ourselves in. I don't want to live in a rut. I want to live in the freedom of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Because keep this in mind. Wherever we're at in the spiritual realm, we still have carnal thoughts. We still have carnal affections. That's why we need to be with the believers that believe. Come on now. I've never seen it. I, I'm seeing things now that God showed me when I first come here almost 19 years ago. But I'm seeing it now more so than ever. I, I'm fascinated with it. I don't understand it, but I'm fascinated with it. If you've got sexual desires, why would you cast them out? Well, the woman ain't supposed to be dressed that way. You ain't supposed to be looking. Don't blame the woman for your, your desires. The same thing can be said with the women. Uh-uh. You, you have control over what you see. You have control over what you think. And it's time to start thinking in the realm of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not going to blame somebody for what I might be thinking or I'm what I might be doing. I am responsible for me. You're not responsible for me. I'm not responsible for you. Outside, I have a, I have a need to try to feed you the best way I can through the Holy Ghost, but I am not responsible for you. Can y'all say, can I have some big meals over there? If you got trouble looking, get you some. My daddy used to plow with a, with a mule. My daddy had what they call blinders. If you got problems, go get you some blinders. Who cares what people think? I care what Jesus thinks. We have authority. 
You can't do anything on your own. If you get out there and try to fight the devil, Satan and his demon, he can whip up on you. But when you go under the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit, the demons don't have a chance. But you can't be thinking about things you ain't supposed to be thinking about. Amen? Okay. Satan is real. Many difficulties that prevent us from accomplishing God's work can be attributed to him. But we have authority over him. Let's take authority. Let's take authority. Let's take authority. Daniel. We all know about Daniel. Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. Here's an example of prayer being delayed. How many times have y'all's prayers been delayed? I know as many prayers have been answered. Skeeter said many prayers have been answered. For all of us, we can say prayers have been answered. But what about if we pray and, and the prayers are not immediate? We have a microwave prayer mentality. We spend too much time at Wendy's and McDonald's and Burger King. We got to take time. We got to give God a chance to work. Don't, don't say, God, I'm going to put my prayer in there, press a button for 30 seconds, and after the bell, but ding, you open it up, and the prayer hasn't been answered. What's the matter, God? You don't love me? Well, you're not giving God a chance to work. There are things that might need to take place for that prayer to be answered, because if it's answered too quick, it can cause more trouble. You following me on that? And they had a deacon down south. He got mad at the preacher. I don't know. You know, that one he was mad about something, I guess. I want to be on his knees, so though. Might be a good question. How do you become a deacon? But anyway, he says, I'm mad at that preacher and I ain't giving my tithe money to the church. I had a bell. That's your money, baby. It wasn't me, I wasn't pastor now. So he put his money up. And they had a family going through some hard times. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take that money that I'm supposed to go to the church and I'm going to give to them. It just so happened that God was working with them to get them to come to Him. So what He did, and this is a true story, what He did, He took the tithe money that's supposed to go to the work of the Lord, and He took and He gave it to them. All He did was prolong the agony. God was working in their life. A lot of times we can get in the way of what God is doing by doing what we think we ought to do. Y'all with me on that? Amen. Pray, 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 pray. Okay. But Daniel, his prayer was held up in one more day. Amen. But God came through. God came through. Authority. We must take over authority. If we don't take over authority of our children in a godly way, they're going to grow up without under authority. We need to be under God's authority. Amen? Amen? Satan's main devices is deception. Deception is an act of deliberately deceiving. Satan's daily goal is to cheat us. Y'all know what hanky panky is? I don't know about the church we get that I think Hanky Panky is just fooling with you, I guess. But Satan likes to fool with us. <laughs> but Satan has got to submit to the power of the Holy Spirit. Satan's got to. Amen? God tells us that we have victory over our common enemy. Who's our common enemy? Not my, not my Pentecostals, not my Church of Christ, not my, uh, I'm from Church of Christ, I don't think, by the way. Uh, my background is in Church of Christ. Praise the Lord, back in, in, back in these areas and territory. But anyway, our, our battle is not against another denomination. If they blood bought, praise God for them, okay? Praise God for them. You blood bought, praise God for them. Amen. But our enemy is Satan. Our enemy is Satan and his demons. Y'all, let me just share this real quick. If somebody is addicted to alcohol, I'm talking about somebody, my dad was, so I'm talking about it. 
you would the Lord now. But a person who is addicted to alcohol, y'all ready? This person can't take one drink or nothing. When this person takes one drink, it's going to end up him being highly intoxicated. That's addiction. Addiction is going to bring you or pull you where you don't want to go. It's going to make you do things you never thought you would do. It would get you into more trouble that you never really wanted to be in. And in turn, you got a problem trying to get out of it. Amen? Well, if you got a problem drinking, don't fool around people with drinks. Find you some people that, that drunk in the Holy Spirit. Amen? I get drunk in the Holy Spirit, don't cost me nothing. I'll bother a little bit. I don't have a headache. And I can remember what I did. I remember down south, but we used to talk really long. I tell you the secret about it, but I tell you ain't gonna better than me. We back when we were 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. Uh, <clears throat> he said, you know something, brother? Uh, did I have a good time? Do you remember? No, I don't remember, but I did have a good time. I said, how many times did you do? He said, two times. And if you don't know you had a good time, I'm not going to tell you. All right. Okay. Well, God tells us that we have victory over our common enemy. Therefore, by faith, we have victory. Don't doubt, but believe in turn of walking as believers. God's got so much more for us. God's got so much for us. Let's stand close. Y'all stand with us. Well, if you want to, you can. If you can't, I understand that too. I understand that. Heavenly Father, in the name of